so you have an exam in 30 days and you're not prepared for it. Chances are, you're probably panicking and you don't know what to do. Is it over for you? Well, not quite. I've got a roadmap that could take you from a U to an A star in 30 days, only if you put in the work. So subscribe and let's dive right in. So if we want to change your grades from a U to an A star in 30 days, we need a game plan. And your game plan should be very efficient because time is not on your side. A good game plan should incorporate these four things. A little bit of theory studies, a lot of topical questions, a fair amount of past papers, and some form of exam simulation. Apart from that, you should also track your performance as frequently as you can. This will allow you to see progress as well as determine your strengths and weaknesses. So let's create a game plan for Pure One A level maths. You can create something similar for other maths components or even other subjects as long as you incorporate the four principles that we mentioned above. We need to start by arranging the topics in an order that makes the most sense for the time that we have. For Pure One, we already know that the MVT is series. If you haven't watched the video explaining the trends in Pure One math, watch that first and then come back to this one. So series is our priority topic, then differentiation, then we'll do functions which will lead us nicely into trig, from here we'll do coordinate geometry which will lead us into circular measure, then finally we'll do integration. I'm not including quadratics because I assume that you're somewhat comfortable with it since it's literally the first topic. Now that we have our order of priority, how are we going to study all these topics in only 30 days? Week 1, understanding the concepts. On day one, we'll start with series, learn how it works, and learn how to solve its popular questions. Record how well you performed. This is obviously subjective, but if you wanted to make it quantitative, you could do a set of questions and your performance will be based on the marks that you get in those questions. On day two, do the same thing for differentiation. But before you start on differentiation, do three questions on series to check if your knowledge is still intact. From days 3 to 7, repeat the same things for every topic, making sure to test your knowledge on the previous topic before moving on to the next. But how are we going to learn these concepts? Consume video tutorials, or look for websites with concise revision notes, or even just simply using your text. After you learn a topic, test yourself by doing some questions on each topic. This is a good way to check if you actually understood anything during your study session. This is our game plan for week 1. Week 2, target practice. On days 8 and 9, we're going to do almost like a mock test. We'll do two tests which will consist of a mixture of questions that covers all eight topics. When you finish each test, I want you to go through it. Record your performance for each topic. Now you start to notice the topics that are causing you the most problems. These are the topics that you'll focus on on days 10 to 14. Go over the syllabus to make sure your understanding of the concept is in check. More often than not, you simply be struggling with applying the concepts to the questions. So for that, we we'll use topical past paper questions. Go through topical questions for that topic and you notice that they can be split into usually about four different types of questions. Drill all the different types of questions. Do this for all the different topics that are causing you the most problems. And in all this, make sure you're recording your performance. Week 3, Introduction to Past Papers. We're now going to be starting past papers. Do not time yourself in these papers, as our focus is on familiarizing ourselves with the structure of these past papers and just getting used to answering them. On day 15, you will do a full past paper. And again, you're going to record your performance for each topic and make sure to analyze the paper so you know where you went wrong and how to avoid that mistake in future papers. You'll notice that there are probably still some topics that you're struggling with. On day 16, you would drill topical questions for the topics that you struggled with in the previous past paper and record your performance. Day 17, you do another past paper, identify weak topics, drill them and repeat this process until day 21. Week 4, exam simulation. From here, we'll start simulating an exam environment. We'll start timing ourselves and emulating exam conditions. So that's no talking, no disturbances, just you and your paper for one hour and 15 minutes. On day 22, we'll do our first full simulation. Time yourself and make sure your environment is a good enough simulation of the exam environment. Now the technique that we'll use in solving the past paper is as follows. Start with questions that are most comfortable. Now we don't want to start flapping through the paper panicking and looking for the easy questions. We're going to do this in an organized manner. 
question papers are naturally arranged in a way that the difficulty increases as you go through the paper. So we'll start on question 1. Analyze the question. If after 2 minutes of thinking you have no idea what's going on, move on to the next question. And do the same for all the questions. By the time you've gone through all the questions, go back to the questions you struggled with and attempt to solve them. But this time, prioritize the ones with more marks. There's usually a chance that even if you don't get the full marks, you could get method marks for attempting the question if you use the correct method. Keep repeating this until you have attempted all the questions, leave no question unanswered. If you do manage to answer all the questions within the allotted time, go over your work to check for any mistakes and correct them if they are. By this time, you've probably run out of time. Mark your paper, record your performance, repeat this every day until day. Day 29. Day 29 will be your final simulation. On this day, you want to do the paper that most resembles the paper that you're going to write. For example, if you're writing in May, June 2024, then you want to do the February, March 2024 paper. On day 30, you will not write a paper. Instead, we'll focus on the mental aspect of preparing for the exam. Go over any common mistakes that you typically make and make a mental note of those so you know to look out for them in the exam. Analyze the papers that you have done in the past week. Avoid solving a full paper as this could fatigue you. You can do a few questions if you feel the need to. Make sure to get a good night's sleep. Ideally, you should be sleeping well throughout this whole month. Day 31 is D-Day. Go to the exam hall 15 minutes before the exam starts. Line up as instructed and refrain from discussing concepts as this will probably cause unnecessary stress. Go into the exam, activate exam simulation mode and simply go through the motions that you have been practicing from day 22 to 29. Ace the exam and walk out of the exam room with your head held high. Don't discuss the exam with anyone. Quickly take the chance to come back to this video and comment mission complete. Now, I want you to understand that this is not a rigid plan. You can change it and model it to what you think will work best for you. And feel free to use this for any other subjects. It's not just restricted to maths. Just remember to incorporate the four principles that we talked about earlier. That's theory, topical questions, past papers, and exam simulation. If you intend to use this method, take us on an Instagram post. Hashtag UDA star in 30 and follow us on Instagram and subscribe to our YouTube channel for more insights like these. Otherwise, the ball is in your court. Play ball.